today as someone who has served or serving our country is for you to walk away knowing that we remember you, that we're grateful for you, that we honor you, not just on a weekend, right, but every day as we are able to live in this free and great country that we do. And so in just a moment, I'm going to give some instruction for those of you who have served and who are serving to come up and receive your challenge coin for myself or Pastor Alan this morning. But before we do that, can I just pray a prayer of blessing? And family, would you join me in just praying a prayer of blessing over our men and women who have served and are serving this country? So God, I thank you and I praise you for the men and women who have gone above and beyond in serving our country of helping to ensure that we live in the free nation that we do. And God, I just pray in this moment that they would not only feel honored by their family, but that they'd be seen and known by you more than ever. That you're proud of them. That we're proud of them. That you're grateful for them and so are we. So would you bless them? Would you keep them? Would you make your glorious face to shine upon them? Continue to grant them your peace and protection and provision in Jesus' name. Everybody said well, hey, if you are a veteran, I want two things to happen. One, I want you to make your way up one of these two aisles as we continue to worship so Pastor Alec and I can give you this Challenge Day coin. But can you just raise your hand if you are a veteran in this room? Can we just applaud you, please? Turn around.
thing that I'm mindful of this morning is in particular view of what heaven looks like. The angels and the elders specifically, they bow down before the Lord. They take their crowns, everything that they've earned, and they lay it down at the feet of Jesus because nothing is comparable to Jesus. Nothing is comparable to the one true king who sits on the one true throne of heaven.
to generation, we've seen moves of God that bring revival. And the word revival at its core, rock revive, is to bring back to life. So I think you and I, we want revival for our city. We want revival for our nation. We want revival for our world. We want to fly. Right here so that we as a church can distribute 
up into our community over the holiday season. And so there's more information on the screen and with that QR code. And we also have an Amazon wish with a wish list.
today, every situation we can name, your name is greater. We speak Jesus over every person here today. We speak Jesus over our country today. We speak Jesus God, over our future today. We speak Jesus over God, every, everything that we will individually and corporately face. We declare your authority and your rule and reign over our lives. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody together said, Amen. 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 It is so good to have you with us. Welcome to everybody joining us at all of our Christ Fellowship locations. We're in your gardens. Good to have you. Everybody online. And uh, on this special Veterans Day weekend, once again, would you help me thank all the men and women that serve us Well, we are in a series called Timeless Truth for Truthless Times because we live in some truthless times. And we need some timeless truth from the Word of God to build our lives on. So we know which way to go when things around us get confusing and, and, and turned upside down. We know where we can go back to. And uh, we're studying the book of Proverbs written by, according to God, the wisest person that has ever or will ever live. So there's something for all of us to learn in this book, Study of Proverbs. And in very verse 1 of chapter 1, Solomon, who writes this book, most of all the Proverbs is written by him, he establishes the purpose of the book of Proverbs and the reason we're even doing this series. And this is what it says in Proverbs 1.1. These are the wise sayings of Solomon, David's son, Israel's king, written down so we'll know how to live well and write, and to say that with me out loud. Understand what life means and where it's going. This, this study, these words that we're digging into are helping us understand what life is all about. And where it's going and where it's heading and how we can be on the, on the pathway that actually leads to life. So it's more than just about gaining knowledge. It's about applying that knowledge to our lives so that it carries our life to the life that God has for us to live. Now, if you were with us uh, week one when we kicked off the series, I told you about uh, Julie's mountain biking accident in the Colorado mountains that landed her in the hospital, uh, uh, struggling for a life. She had a fractured back, broken shoulder, collapsed lung. Uh, five of her ribs were completely shattered. Like, they were like, they're just pulverized. And she was fighting for her life. And we were there going, how did we get here? Right? We, we, how, we, didn't, we didn't know that mountain biking could be so dangerous. We didn't even know how to mountain bike. What are we thinking? In fact, I found this picture this week. Is the picture that we took right before we went down the mountain. Julie calls it her a lamb to the slaughter. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so she recovered. And after she came out of recovery and got back home, we were talking with people saying, I can't believe they let us do that. Like, I can't believe there were warning signs everywhere telling you, don't do this. Turn back. Right? And we went back to that mountain two years later with our son Jefferson just to kind of pray over the area where God had spared Julie's life. And as we were walking back up the mountain to that spot, guess what we saw? We saw these signs that said, Warning! You're stupid! That's for something! Turn around. I mean, all it did say was, Todd and Julie, stop. That's all it did say, right? Trying to get our attention, but somehow we... Either we didn't see the warning signs, or else we just completely ignored them and thought we knew better or could handle it, what possibly could go wrong. Well, today I want to talk to you about some of the warning signs from God's Word, specifically some of the ones we're discovering as we work through the book of Proverbs, where God is trying to get our attention to help us to avoid some of the pitfalls. And tragedies of life, not that life can be problem-free, but dear Lord, there is a lot of things that you and I can avoid if we just listen to God's warnings and what he has to say. So we're going to look at a passage of scripture in chapter 4 of uh, Proverbs 4. If you have, have your Bibles, you can open up your Bibles and turn your Bibles on Proverbs chapter 4. And in this one passage, we're going to see the people of wisdom, the pathway of wisdom, the process of wisdom, and the payout of wisdom. All packed in this one verse. And if you have not been catching up on your Proverbs reading, I'm going to catch you up to this. Remember, love scripture. Okay, so you're welcome. Here we go. Proverbs 4, starting in verse 10. Solomon says, Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom, and lead you along 
straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will stumble. So hold on to instruction. Don't let it go. Guard it well, for it is life. Don't set your foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn from it and go your way. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter and brighter until the full light of day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They don't even know what makes them stumble. So my son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep correct talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze before you give careful thought to your path, the path through your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. There's a lot of wisdom packed in that one passage of Scripture out of Proverbs chapter 4. And the first thing that we see as we dive into this is we see the people of wisdom. The people of wisdom. Solomon was passing on to his children the wisdom that his father David had passed on to him. In fact, the purpose of Solomon in writing Proverbs was to pass wisdom, godly wisdom, on to the next generation. Like he received it from his father David, like David received it from his father Jesse, he received it from his father Obed, he received it from his father Boaz, of Ruth and Boaz, and just keeps going back and back and back. People of wisdom training the next generation in godly wisdom and the ways of wisdom. In fact, in the next chapter, Proverbs 2, verse 20, uh, it reads this way in the Amplified. So you will walk in the way of good men and women, that is, those of personal integrity, moral courage, honorable character, and keep, say it with me, to the paths of the righteous. So Solomon was teaching his son how to walk in the way of wise people that had come before him. Think about the godly men and women that have gone before you. Godly men and women that, that live with personal integrity and moral courage and, and honor, that, that understood that their personal testimony would actually have an impact on those coming behind them. I mean, I, I can I start rattling off the list. Dick and Mabel Smith, Scott's grandparents, kind of the great grandparents of Christ Fellowship, right? Uh, they, they poured in wisdom. I, I can think of Edward Helm and my own grandmother. I think of my mom and dad and uh, Don and Joy Bray up at our Fort St. Lucie campus, APSL. I mean, people, wisdom, people of wisdom, passing on godly wisdom into my life that is now I'm passing some of that on to you. It's what, it's what godly people, wisdom people do. And in the verse right before, verse 10, where we read, Solomon is telling his son to actually love wisdom the way he will love his future bride. So think about that for a minute. He said, you got to love wisdom and pursue wisdom the way you're going to pursue her, right? You're going to love her that much. Why do you, you say that? Well, because you something. Solomon knew that when you keep God's wisdom, it changes your life. It changes the way you think and, and, and the way you talk and the way you act and and the priorities of your life. He, he knew that it will help you know what to do when you don't know what to do in life. He, he knew that the godly wisdom would actually guard you and protect your life, that it will be a blessing and a foundation for your children and your children's children as it was for him, that it would be an inheritance of righteousness that would be passed on. And what he was doing in Proverbs was he was, Solomon was passing on his godly inheritance of wisdom to his sons. And may I just pause for a minute and say, parents, the most important responsibility you have is to do that. It's, it's not just to provide, you know, a house and some food and, and a, a good education. It's not just to make sure they can play sports and are well-rounded and get their annual trip to Disney World in there somehow, right? I mean, that's not your most important assignment. You know it. The most important assignment you have as a parent is to help your children know God in a personal way. Follow Jesus.
means is to have a friendship with God. And that is the most important thing you have to do. And you've heard me say it before. The church is the only organization in the world that is committed to you as parents to help you do the most important thing you've got to do. Nobody else is doing this. We're here for you. We got you, right? We're working together. Oh, uh, this is what you hear us say all the time. And parents get your kids here every Sunday. Not every other Sunday, every third Sunday, every Sunday. On Wednesday nights, get your students back on Wednesday nights. They need to be here. You know, my mom and dad never once asked me, Todd, do you want to go to church on Wednesday night? Never. <laughs> Pastor Stephen ever asked you? No, they didn't ask us that question. Why? Because they knew something we didn't know. Just like my mom knew I can't eat Pop Tarts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? <laughs> I need some veggies and some protein and some, some different size Oreo cookies. Pastor Dave, I need something a little bit better than that. They, they knew I needed, I needed something to feed my spiritual soul. Because that would actually carry with me my whole life and into eternity. So parents, when we're telling you, get your kids back here at CF Kids University on Wednesday nights. Students get back here on Wednesday nights. It is not because we're trying to build a big student ministry. It is not. Because we're trying to build a big kids' ministry. It's because we're trying to help you and your kids build a big life that God has intended for them to live. And you want to discover how to use that to use them between your hearts. You've heard me say before that parents that treat church as optional shouldn't be surprised when their kids treat Jesus as unnecessary. Just a little thing there for you to think about as we work through the message today. Warning signs everywhere. So first, we see people of wisdom. Walking in wisdom, passing God's wisdom to the next generation. We are that people. We will be that people in the race of the heart of the next generation. That's what we're doing. Now, the second thing that we see in this passage is actually the path of wisdom. There is a path of wisdom. See, throughout your life, multiple times in your life, you have to make a decision. Am I going to go that way or am I going to go this way? Am I going to go the way I know I should go or the way I want to go? Am I going to go this way or the way that the world's going? Am I going to go with what feels right or what? Am I going to actually search out to know what is what is right? And all through our fathers, Solomon is teaching us that there is a path that will lead you to life and lead you to freedom. And wisdom will guard that path. Wisdom will keep you on that path. Wisdom will make sure you get where you need to go. Look again at, at, at Proverbs 14. He says, I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I'm going to lead you on straight paths. When you walk, your steps won't be hampered. When you run, you're not going to stumble. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked. It's a word for somebody. Don't, don't, don't walk in the ways of evildoers. Avoid it. Don't, don't travel on it. It's going to lead to death. Later on, they'll say, there's a way that seems right to a man. Feels right. Don't try it. But he says the way of that path actually leads to death. So wisdom's path actually, actually brings you life. Wisdom's path actually brings you freedom. Wisdom's path actually helps you keep, keep from running off the side of the mountain, laying ditch somewhere, hoping you can survive with some cracked ribs and a broken shoulder. Wisdom keeps you on the path. Now this passage of scripture is actually a picture of a father and son walking and talking and the dad pointing out uh, the path that leads to life and, and pointing out the path to avoid that leads to destruction. Solomon is actually posting some warning signs for us to look at. The he says, don't set your foot on the path of the wicked. Don't walk in the way of evildoers. Turn from it and go your way. Keep your mouth free from perversity, perverse language. Keep corrupt talk off of your lips. Keep your eyes looking straight ahead. Give careful thought to the path of your feet. Be steadfast. It's like he's actually posting warning signs for us. It's like he's saying, don't go that way. Don't, don't go down that road. That road leads to regret. That path leads to a lot of problems that if you just don't go on that path, then you're going to avoid those problems in your life. Let me give you some wisdom today. There's a sign saying, stop. Turn around. There's danger down that, down that path. And let me, let me remind you, God's warnings, he's not trying to keep you from having fun. He's trying to keep you from having regrets. 
Sometimes when I was a teenager, I thought God's always trying to keep you from everyone. Can't go to that, can't do that, can't do that. And, and I thought there was all these things I did. No, man, his ways. His ways are trying to keep you so you don't live with regrets. Because too many people are living. His ways don't hinder us. His ways actually help us discover life the way the creator of life actually intended life to be lived. So, throughout Proverbs, as we're reading, Solomon puts up some signs. Some of his signs are talking to people that uh, ignore wisdom. That's not you because you're here today. You're leaning in and you're saying, teach me. But there are people that ignore wisdom when, when they get a word from the Lord and somebody says something, they ignore it and says you're foolish. So, he's saying, don't ignore wisdom. Don't resist the wisdom of God. There's also signs that he puts up that Solomon says, uh, be careful with the company that you keep. Now he actually says this in Proverbs 13, keep company with the wise, wise people, and you'll become wise, but if you make friends with stupid people, you know who they are, right? If you make friends and keep friends with stupid, you will be ruined. The way we say it around here, help me out. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I'll show you your future, yeah. Who are you letting into your life? Solomon would say, warning, warning, warning. Your, your closest friends better be pushing you closer to God. There's, there's one insight to hear about finances. And by the way, uh, Solomon was one of the wealthiest men that ever, ever lived. He makes uh, Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and all those guys look like they're hurting, right? Because he had a solid gold plates. Solid gold plates, like thick stuff, not plated. It wasn't like trying to have some, you know, spray gold on it. No. And since he was the wisest man and the wealthiest man, he's probably got some things to teach us about finances. So there's, there's things he tells us all throughout the book. He tells us in, in Proverbs 3, uh, verse 9, that we're to honor the Lord with the first part of everything that we have. The first part of our crops. Then your barns will be... Filled and overflowing in your vats will brim with new wine. He just reminded us that any place you put God in the first place, He blesses that place. He, he guards against being stingy. He says, you know, the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller, but the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Don't be stingy. He warns us about spending everything that comes in. He says this in Proverbs 21 20, stupid people spend their money as fast as they get it. Hashtag don't be stupid, right? Don't spend all your money. But there's one place that Solomon spends a lot of time putting up warning signs, and it's around sexuality. And this is one of his warning signs in Proverbs 5. The lips of an immoral woman are sweet as honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is as bitter as poison, as dangerous as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her, her steps lead straight to the grave. Stay away from her. Don't enter her. Don't go near the door of her house. If you do, you will lose your honor. Strangers will consume your wealth, and someone else will enjoy the fruit of your labor. And in the end, you will groan in anguish when disease consumes your body. Like keeping it real, Solomon. Right? Jesus. It's like Solomon is saying, do not enter. Whatever you do, danger here. Don't, don't go this way. Don't head down this path. I know it looks good. It's going to feel good for a minute. But, but, don't, but don't change what you want the most or what you want in the moment. Guard your, guard your heart. Solomon basically saying, run from sexual sin. In another place, he says, don't even let your eyes look that way. So that would be speaking of pornography. Don't even let your eyes go. Get your blinders on. Look straight ahead. Fix your gaze straight ahead, right? Because that would stare you and Drag you down a path you don't want to go. Remember, the warnings are welcome. The warnings are what for our good. It reminds me of what the Apostle Paul says in, in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He says, run from sexual sin. Because no other sin so clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality, and the word there is pornea, same word we word for pornography, sexual morality is a sin against your own body. I mean, it's not hurt anybody, it's hurt your body. Turn your heart, your minds. It's trapping you. It's keeping you from the life God has for you. And I can tell you as a pastor, I've talked to people about a lot of regrets in their life. And usually the number one regret they have ties back to some kind of sexual sin or some kind of sexual promiscuity that they got into at a very young age and it just sucked them down the path. And God's saying, I don't want that for you. I got something. 
something better for you. By the way, God is not anti-sex. Woo! He created it. It's his idea, right? He's the creator of sex. He says it's actually good, but he's got a way that we're supposed to, to use it in a way that blesses our life. How it's supposed to enhance our life. It's, it's like a guardrail. Right? You, you see this guardrail up here? This guardrail, think about what a guardrail does. A guardrail keeps cars and people from going over a cliff. Rolling over, getting hurt, getting turned upside down. That's what a, that's what a guardrail does. God has guardrails for us in our life. Look at this picture of this guardrail. I can guarantee you that the people driving on that road were thankful there was a guardrail. Because when they were driving at night, not knowing where they were going, you can't even count how many people were spared because of the guardrail. Can I tell you, guardrails are good. Boundaries are a blessing. Don't resist them. Embrace them. Think about, think about a car. A car, a car is a blessing, right? Uh, without it, it'd be hard to get to work tomorrow. You'd be riding a Porsche or something to get where you have to go. But a car with no boundaries is not a blessing. A car that, that can't stop, a car that has no speed limit. You just, if everybody was just driving their car, if there were no boundaries, you could just drive as fast as you want, anywhere you want. Kind of sounds like South Florida. It'd be dangerous, right? No stop lights, no stop signs, it'd be deadly. It's like, it's like fire. Fire's a good thing. You can cook with it, you can see with it, right? But you, know, you can put it in a fire pit, roast a marshmallow, right? If you have a fireplace and you live in South Florida, you get to use it those three cold days that we get in January, right? As long as it stays in the fireplace, it's, it's really great. But if it gets outside of the boundary of that fireplace or that fire pit, it can burn the whole house down. So it is with sex. God, the creator of sex, says there's some, there's some boundaries. There's some guidelines. And if it gets outside of those guidelines, those guidelines is in marriage between one man and one woman. That's the, that's the, that's the box. When it gets outside of that, it just it burns things down. He said, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to burn your life down. So embrace the boundaries. Boundaries are a blessing. Warning signs need to be welcomed, not resisted. Don't ignore them, don't resist them, they keep you on the path of wisdom. Let me just say this. Sometimes we find ourselves down a road or someplace we've already crashed and we don't know how to get out. Like when Julie and I were on the side of the mountain and she was holding on for life for about an hour and a half until the mountain control could find us to lift her on a board, put her on a wheelbarrow, take her to a pickup truck, put her in a hand. I couldn't do that by myself. They had to come help us. Sometimes you, you find yourself down the road. And you're like, how did, I get here? how did I make this decision in my marriage or in my thought life? Or my, I got tied up in something I didn't mean to get tied up in. And you need somebody to help you get free. This coming Saturday, we actually have an event. It's actually not an event, it's an encounter. It's called Freedom Encounter. To help you walk in freedom in the life that God has for you. And thousands and thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people in our church have gone through Freedom of the Counter. And every time you go through it, some of you need to go through it again. You experience the, the, you're getting yourself back on the pathway of life that leads to life and freedom. And there's people there, wise people, people of wisdom, to help you get on the path of wisdom. So I would encourage you to be with us. Saturday, you can get more information by texting the 441 to find out how this can help you. So first, there's a people of of wisdom second, there's a path of wisdom. The third thing that we see, and this is really important, is the process of wisdom. There's power in process. The process of gaining understanding. The process of growing up in wisdom and understanding. That doesn't come overnight. Look at verse 18. It says, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun. It's shining brighter and brighter and brighter. The, the way the wicked is like in darkness, they don't even know what makes them stumble. So the path of the righteous is like the morning sun. It gets brighter and brighter and, and brighter. When you, when you go out at dawn, or you're out right as the sun is getting ready to come up, you can see, but not real clearly. It is, like I can look at my backyard and go, yeah, I think that's another enemy, right? But I'm not sure until the sun gets a little higher. So what he's saying is the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. So when you first start following God and learning his ways, you, you begin to understand his heart and his nature. But the more you follow, it gets brighter and brighter. You begin to understand that, that wisdom is not a single step. 
A simple answer to a, to a question. It's a lifelong journey of knowing God. Understanding His voice and His, his heart. It starts like we learned in the first two weeks. This journey begins with the fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of this, this holy, reverent awe of God and His authority and His rule over my life. God, you are awesome. God, you are Holy God, you are right. There are things I don't know. I'm not God. You are God. And so I surrender to you. And when you walk day by day, step by step on this path, this, you begin to hear the voice of God, know the voice of God, and understand the ways of God in a better way. Do you remember the, um, the verse of Scripture we looked at two weeks ago in Psalm 25, verse 14, that says, um, The secret of the Lord is for those who fear Him. That's that word secret in the Hebrew is the word sod. And that word sod actually means a, a confidential conversation. A, a cushion or a couch where you sit down as a circle of friends. That's what that means. So for those that fear the Lord, which is a starting place, he invites us into that personal place of conversation. And the more that you sit with God and learn his voice, the more you hear his voice. Because you're actually attuning yourself to his ways, to, to his wants, to, to what he has that you know is best for you. You begin to understand, you begin to see it from his perspective, not just from, from your own wants and desires, but from his perspective. His wisdom is actually like a light that shines down on your life. That even when things get dark, you, you can still find your way. He's still helping you take a step and, and, and learn where to go. And okay, oh, God's wisdom says go here next. Okay, it keeps you from falling over some cliff because his wisdom is shining in your life. Life, no matter if it's dark around you, dark in the world, dark situation you have to go through, his light is that wisdom is growing brighter and brighter in your life. So you don't fear anything. There's no fear. Because you have the wisdom of the Lord in your life. There's a confidence. It comes with that. But can I tell you, sometimes that, as you grow that wisdom, it actually uh, starts to point inward. And uh, God begins to deal with little things on the inside. Attitudes, actions, things you didn't think were a good deal. He's like, yeah, God, that's the big one. We need to work on that one. When he does that, don't resist it. See, the, 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 this process of wisdom is actually helping you become more like Jesus. It's actually helping you grow up in your faith. Unfortunately, there's too many baby Christians still in the world today, in, the, in our church today. But can I just do it for a minute? The process of wisdom helps you grow up. We need to grow up. It's like when the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, I had to feed you milk because you were immature. I should have been feeding you meat, solid food, but you can handle it. Because you were spiritually immature. I wonder if God is going, would you just work the process of wisdom and let me grow you up and get you out of diapers? So you're not so dependent on someone else to feed you all the time. And by now you should actually be feeding somebody else. It's a process. Okay, last one we're gonna pray. When you hang out with people of wisdom, you stay on the path of wisdom. And wisdom begins to work. It's working you, the process of wisdom. You get in on the payout of wisdom. There is a payout. There is a blessing. There are promises that you will never experience unless you stay on the path of wisdom. There are things that God has for you here that you can't get anywhere else except following the wisdom of God. I listed out a few of them here for you. Uh, you there's long life. And peace, Proverbs 3. There's favor in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Health to your body, riches and honor, protection and safety, freedom from fear and a holy confidence. I could go on and on and on. There are so many paths and promises that God wants to bless your life with when you stay on the path of wisdom. His wisdom, He knows how to get the most out of life. Can I tell you, you can never know. All the problems and pitfalls that you avoid by staying on this path. You'll never, you can't even count it because you're not even going to have to deal with it. There are certain prayers you will never have to pray about because you 
just get on this path. They're not saying it's free for all the free. There are some things you will, there are some paths you will never go down because you stay on God's path of wisdom. Right. That, you can't even count how many marriages are restored because a husband and wife decide to stay on this path. To, to, to just put the wisdom of God into their life. Can't even count how many students don't screw up their life because they're following wisdom's path. They're not making stupid decisions. They're going, oh, God says do it this way. Can't even measure the amount of regret that you will not have to deal with because you stay on wisdom's path. So let me ask you just one question. What warning signs have you been ignoring? Well, what has God been trying to get your attention with? Trying to warn you, say, don't go there. No, no, don't, don't, don't. Don't do that. It's not going to try to keep you away from good. This will actually take you down a path of harm. And you've been ignoring it. Maybe, maybe the sign said, uh, do not enter. And you entered it anyway. And you're already there. Jesus, stay by for 